How are you? Good. Happy, uh, happy fall. It definitely is fall. It's yeah, definitely. Like a 20 <laughs> degree temperature drop, right? And yeah. <laughs> I have to put my, pull out the sweaters, jackets, boots. Yeah, nice. but it's sunny. It is sunny. It is beautiful. Yeah, it is yeah. Beautiful. very nice. Yeah. So uh, looking forward to the holidays. We actually, I've never done this before. I got a new, we got a new um, artificial tree and um, it's up. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you're organized then. Paul, Paul was like, you're kidding, right? And I'm like, no, I took it out of the box. I need to make sure it works. I'm not putting it back. <laughs> Might as well put it up. <laughs> <laughs> so that's okay. That's, it's, it's all good. It's all good. So yeah. Um, yeah. So I think we're going to get started as you all is know. It, Susan is it just me or do you have other people? Oh, we have other people coming. Yeah. Donna's here. Oh, hi, Donna. Hi. How are you, Susan? I'm good, good. Yeah. Happy fall. Happy almost Turkey Day. And as I was saying, almost Merry Christmas because my trees are <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> not decorated. <laughs> Blink twice and it will be here. <laughs> True. Before we know it, before we know it, that's for sure. Um, All right. So we're going to do Thanksgiving for one or two, not for 25. Okay. okay. <laughs> How do we do that? Once again, I'm Susan Doyle, Oasis Senior Advisors. If you know anybody who needs help navigating senior care or senior living, please give us a ring. Always here to help. No charge. But today it's Downsize Gourmet Day. Yay. Um, as you said, we're going to focus on Thanksgiving for one or two. Uh, I found this great recipe um, for honeyed sweet potatoes. Oh, if you could mute, please, and put your, don't forget, put your email in the chat so I can send the recipes to you. Anyway, um, I have honey roasted sweet potatoes with carrots and apples and pears. Yum. Um, Brussels sprouts, which used to be, ugh, now they're delicious. They're rape, so we're going to do Brussels sprouts with uh, Parmesan and a little bit of balsamic. Uh, we're also going to make a nice salad, which is uh, greens with pears, cherry, uh, dried cherries, and nuts with a nice cherry vinaigrette dressing. And then lastly, the star of the show is turkey, but they're turkey cutlets that we're gonna saute pretty quickly and make a nice gravy. So we're gonna get started, very excited. So we're gonna start with the sweet potatoes. These take about 25 minutes in the oven. Um, and really you can do a combination of anything you want, uh, root vegetables. So I have a sweet potato, I love carrots, parsnips if you want. Can you hear? I can't see. You can't see. Oh no. That's it. I hope you can see, because that's that's the best part of it. Anyway, so I have one sweet potato. This was one carrot, and I peeled my sweet potato, and then I'm going to cut it. Well, this is a big one. It's a long one. So I'm going to cut it into spears. So I'm going to quarter it and then make it into like half inch um, spears. Don't worry if you think that there's going to be too much because this kind of shrinks up, shrivels up. It's also, it does not have to be super hot to be served. Okay. Which is great. Um, and uh, so as I said, I'm just going to cut the sweet potato up into pieces. And where's my bowl? My bowl. I'm going to stick it in a bowl. And then I'm going to do the same thing with my carrots. Because as I said, when you cook them, they shrivel up a little bit. They get smaller. They're not going to be this size. You know, when you make a stew and you throw carrots or any kind of these veggies in, it does get a lot smaller. It reduces in size. Um, okay, so I got the carrots. I've got sweet potatoes. Well, more sweet potatoes. Uh, and if they're too long, you think they're too long, slice them in half. I mean, that one's kind of long. And then we're going to take a pear. 
the nice thing about like the pears and the apples, they have different textures and they get really soft. So that's nice. I'm just gonna take the core out, the seeds, and then I'm gonna slice them just like I did with the sweet potatoes and carrots. I'm gonna shove them all in here, very simple. And if you feel like eating a piece of the pear or the apple, feel free. <laughs> The, uh, the pear especially gets very soft, um, obviously, when, when it cooks. So it's cooking alongside of sweet potatoes and carrots, which takes a lot longer, right? So this is going to, it's like a nice mix of textures. Okay. And these, this is, you know, a firm apple and a firm pear. So Bartlett pears, the brown ones tend to be um, pretty firm. Um, so you want to use that. Don't let, don't use mushy pears. Um, and this is, what is this? I don't know what kind of apple this is. It might be a pink lady. You could use something a little bit tartar, like not a red delicious, right? You could do green apples, pink ladies, um, just something a little bit tart, tartar that has some tartness to it. And you're gonna say, oh my gosh, Susan, you've got so much fruit and vegetables in there. Believe me, the leftovers are spectacular. So don't be afraid of that. Um, or don't use, if you don't wanna, if you don't have pears, don't use them. If uh, you could do this just with carrots, you know, whatever you want. It's just another, another option, right? And as I said, I made this last week. Oh man, it was so, so good. So what are we gonna put on top of this? One option they tell you to do is, um, it's just going to be some some oil. I mean, you could do this right on. This is going to go on a pan, a roasting pan, 425 degrees. You could either put it all on the pan and mix it, but I'm going to do it in a uh, in a bowl so I don't make a mess. Um, so we're going to have that. It's just some oil and two tablespoons of either honey, your favorite honey, or maple syrup whichever you prefer, whichever you have the most of. So I'm just gonna squeeze that all, guesstimate two tablespoons. And if you want, this is optional. I, I really like this addition. You can add a teaspoon of cinnamon and cardamom and ginger or none. But I did the whole mixture, which is here. So I did a teaspoon of all, of all. put it, throw it all on top. Mix it all up, yum, yum, yum. And then we're gonna put it on the pan. And I know it looks like an awful lot, but it really does shrink down. And as I said, if you don't wanna use all these different things, don't. This is such a flexible recipe that um, really you can do whatever you want. Um, with it, as I said, if you have, par if you're a fan of parsnips, put parsnips in here. Um, yeah, so I am just going to, and we want it to be one nice layer here. Okay, so that's going to be. I'm going to stick that in the oven, 425 for about 25 minutes. It says 25 to 30 minutes, and we'll, we'll keep checking on it periodically, but it's gonna be done when it starts to turn a little bit brown and softens up. Obviously you want the potatoes to cook. The, um, the fruit will cook much quicker than the potatoes. So that's, that's good. At the very end, we're gonna top it off with some chopped nuts. That's only if you want to. If you want a little crunchy, you can put the nuts on. But I'm gonna put that to the side later. See, this is all so, so easy. And uh, which is what it's all about for me, right? <laughs> so I'm going to put all this stuff over to the side. So while that's in the oven, we're going to move on to our Brussels sprouts. Um, I just want to make sure I put everything in here. Yep, we'll top it with some pepper at the end. So Brussels sprouts. Oh gosh, I remember when I was a kid, <laughs> we had Brussels sprouts or we tried to have Brussels sprouts. Everyone tried to hide the Brussels sprouts because how did you make them? 
you boiled them, they taste like nothing, but now it's become, Brussels sprouts have become very, very popular. And why? Because we're not cooking the heck out of them. We're not boiling them. It's very popular now to roast them just in the oven very, very quick. And this is a very similar recipe to what we did with the, with the sweet potatoes, but it's gonna go a lot quicker. So um, I bought, you know, in the grocery store now, it's, it's funny, you go and you see the, um, the Brussels sprouts on the stalks, which is so, so pretty. Um, and you just kind of take the Brussels, you would pick the Brussels sprouts off. Um, you can also, they have bags of Brussels sprouts, which is great. That's what I did. I actually cleaned mine already. Um, so I had a bag of Brussels sprouts, it's probably about a pound bag. Um, and you can either use them all, use part of it, it really doesn't matter. This recipe tells you to cut the ends off the Brussels sprouts, take that first layer off because it tends to be um, either dirty or whatever, um, and then just cut them in half. So I did that to a bag of Brussels sprouts that I bought from Trader Joe's. I'm not promoting Trader Joe's, but that's where I was. So, um, so we're gonna, we have that. Um, and now what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, toss the Brussels sprouts with oil, garlic powder, pepper, and salt. So once again, it's gonna be some olive oil. It says two tablespoons of olive oil. Some garlic powder. I don't wanna go crazy with the garlic powder. So I'm gonna go take my teaspoon. And sprinkle it in. Ooh, that looks like a lot. I'm not going to do that. Much. And then some pepper, some black pepper. And so, how much black pepper? It's probably, oh, I don't know, a cup. That's to taste, really. And then a half a teaspoon of salt. So, I'm just mixing that all around. And I have my oven set for 400 degrees. So the sweet potatoes is 425. This is 400 degrees. I'm coating all the Brussels sprouts. So all, all you know, everything is nice and coated. And I'm gonna stick it right on a pan, right? So what we're gonna wanna do is kind of keep an eye on this because it's gonna take about maybe 20 minutes to cook. Um, just because they have, uh, they're in halves. A lot of times when I make Brussels sprouts, I will chop them up really finely. So they'll cook a lot quicker. These we're gonna keep an eye on, right? And um, we'll stick them in the oven. Every five minutes or so, I'll take a peek because the last few minutes, we're going to add some Parmesan cheese and a little bit of balsamic vinegar to make it so you'll get that sweetness from the balsamic and the saltiness from the cheese. And then we'll, uh, shoot it with a little bit of hot pepper, right? Mm, sounds good to me. All right, so that's going in the lower oven. All right, don't worry. Paul's looking at his watch, he's like, you are flying through this. How are you gonna be cooking all this stuff? You're gonna be done in 15 minutes. I'm like, no, 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 I won't be, I promise. It might think, seem that way, but it's not. So I've got this beautiful salad recipe that I found. Because so in tur so for Thanksgiving, you have to have turkey, you have to have gravy, you have to have some kind of starch, right? Which is the sweet potatoes and carrot, you know, the root vegetables and the fruit. Um, the green, which is the um, the Brussels sprouts, right? A little bit of uh, um, a little bit of that, and then a salad. I always love having salads, but I know with with us, with my family, you get so full with all the starches, right? That who wants to have a salad? But this one, if you don't eat the salad on Thanksgiving, you'll have it left over the next day because you won't dress it. Okay, so this is basically. Um, uh, Greens, just your normal, you can buy um, 
a box of, the box, I, I, I say the box of greens, um, any kind you want, but I, this is spring mix and baby kale, you know, whatever you want, right? It's just pretty, it's got the different colors. Move this over here. Yes, I did wash it, don't worry, I did wash it. So what are we gonna add to this? We are going to put that over there. So it calls for two pairs. Um, this is gonna be enough salad for about three, hence maybe four people. So you can cut it in half, right? I'm just gonna, I have, it calls for two pairs. I'm just gonna use one of them. Why, what's the difference between a red pair and a yellow pair and a brown pair? Um, I got a bag of pears and they just have different ones. I like the different colors. There is a difference in tartness with them, but if you like pears, they're all good. So with this, we're going to, you know what, let's let, maybe let's start with the, with the dressing first, because this is, uh, it's really very easy. So the dressing is going to be, um, it's a, where's my balsamic? I have balsamic. I know this is a really cute bottle. Um, but any balsamic dressing, not dressing, but vinegar is fine. So we're going to use, you're going to start with the vinegar. So it's a quarter cup of vinegar. And if you make too much of this stuff, that's fine. It'll stay in, it'll stay in the fridge. Um, that's why I have this mason jar, right? So we add the balsamic into a bowl. And then we have dried cherries in the salad, but I found cherry preserves and they tell you to put in three tablespoons of cherry preserves. But what if I can't find cherry preserves? That's a very good question. I was wondering that myself. <laughs> so I think very easy. If you have some leftover, the cranberry jelly, the cranberry sauce that you buy, um, you could use that instead. And then instead of using dried cherries, you can use the cranberry sauce. Oh, another use for cranberry sauce. But if you find cherry preserves, they are so good. Oh my gosh. So if you decide to um, spend the money to buy the cherry preserves, it is really great to have on toast, scones, anything. I mean, this stuff is so, so good. So we have the cherry preserves, we have oil, and then we're gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper because you gotta put salt and pepper in the dressing. You add the oil last, right? That's always the trick. I always make that mistake. I always put everything all together and then it never mixes properly. So we're going to mix the vinegar and the preserves. That looks so pretty. And then we're going to add, how much? Oh, it's a half a cup of olive oil. This is gonna make a lot of, um, a lot of dressing, but that's okay. So you have a quarter cup of balsamic vinegar and a half a cup of oil. I'm actually really psyched about this because I'm getting so tired of the dressing that I make when we have salad. You know, I tend to buy the, bo you know, the bottle of pre-made uh, balsamic vinaigrette, which is fine. It's perfectly fine, but you get bored of it. You know, something else. So we're just gonna mix this all together. Mix it. And then I'm going to try and pour it without making a mess, which I am, into this mason jar so that, as I said, I can, I can use this in the future. You can use it once again on salads, on vegetables, yum, yum, right? Anything you want. So we have our dressing. This way you can shake it up to mix it up again. We just get a napkin. Because I made a mess all over my board here, but that's okay. Easy cleanup, easy peasy. So I'm going to throw this in there. So getting back to our salad, what are we going to put in there? 
So as I said, we've got some greens. We've got a pear. And we're going to want to once again take the seeds out. This one got really soft, but that's okay. And you decide how you want to cut it. If you want it into chunks, or if you want little spheres or a combination of both. Right. So if it's a little mushy, I might say you want to chunk it. This is a little soft right now. Uh, so I'm just going to chunk it like this. And these pears are very small. So I think I am going to put the second one up. You know, I can probably cut the second one up tomorrow when we have leftovers. So I'm just going to throw this right in here. Very simple. So I bought some dried cherries. They're they look like dried cranberries. It's like a little bit larger than a dried cranberry, but it, it's a cherry, so it obviously tastes a little bit different. Really good. I got them at Trader Joe's because it's really close to me. They're quite affordable, but you know, what do you use these for? So if you buy a bag of them, you can just nosh on them. You can just eat them. Um, I like to have yogurt in the morning, so I could put this in my yogurt. Um, cereal, put it on top of your cereal. Put on top of oatmeal, really, really delicious. So, and even that jam, the cherry preserves. If you're into, if you like oatmeal, you could stir a little bit of that in it too. Lots of different uses for it, right? So, if you decide to buy something like this, you know, um, there's many uses, right? I'm always about, gosh, if you buy an ingredient that costs a little bit more, what are the other uses for it? So it's, uh, you know. But I gotta tell you, you like craisins, you know, the cranberries. Oh my gosh, you'll love this. So it also says, if you're a fan of red onion, to chop up um, a quarter cup of red onion. I cut some up, I'll put a little bit on. Onion is not a friend of mine. I love the way it tastes, but it doesn't like me. So I'm just gonna put a little bit for color because it really is very, very pretty. Um, you can also put on, some chopped pecans, right? So I have, I'm using the pecans for this. I'm also putting some on top of my, um, my sweet potatoes that I'm making to give it a little crunch. So once again, if you buy some pecans, don't be afraid of it. There's so many uses. You can make pecan pie, you could put it on top of anything really. So if you like something to have a little bit of crunch, you can put nuts on top of it. Now, if you're allergic, don't eat the nuts, right? Don't do this part, right? So then, um, how do you serve it? So here you have, that was about a half a box of the, uh, of the salad, right? The box salad I have. But I just want you to see, a little goes a long way. You top it with some crumpled gorgonzola. That's what they tell you, because pears and, and blue cheese go really, really well. Don't be afraid of the gorgonzola. If you don't like gorg gorgonzola, is a little bit too strong for you. You can opt for blue cheese. This recipe says to do with gorgonzola. So whatever works for you, right? So if there's something you don't like, leave it out, especially with this stuff. And then we're going to top it. Just shake this up a little bit more. So you wanna make sure that oil and the vinegar and the preserves, um, there we go. Ooh, look at that. Oh boy, that looks so good. That's really, really good. Wow, you're gonna be really psyched later, Paul. <laughs> oh boy, that's delish. So, okay, I'm gonna go take a peek and, and take a look at my, uh, ooh, I'm glad I'm taking a look at these because these Brussels sprouts, they really, here we do quick, um, 
cook fairly quickly or they brown fairly quickly. So you got to, you know, shake them around and, and uh, just keep an eye on them because the last thing we like is uh, that we want is burnt Brussels sprouts. Although I have had burnt ones before, they're not too bad. Anything with a crunch, I say, is good in my book. So let's see. There we go. Let me just put all this stuff over to the side. Give me some space. All right. So I have this. Can I leave this over here? Yes. Okay. I'm going to leave that over there. So what's next? Mm. So I can't make a turkey here. I can't even make a turkey breast. I can't even make half of a breast because it's going to take two hours to make. I was trying, believe me. I was trying like, what am I going to do? Um, so we're going to do turkey for one or two. So how do you do turkey for one or two? Or if you make your turkey and not and have leftover sandwiches, that gets boring after a while. So I don't know if anybody's ever bought turkey cutlets before they, or turkey tenderloins. They used to be really, really popular a few years back. Right now, I don't know if it's oh. probably because it's right before Thanksgiving. Um, I think a lot of this stuff is going to be, you're going to see it all over the shelves right after Thanksgiving. But um, um, especially for turkey tenderloins, the turkey tenderloin is almost, I don't know if you've ever seen a pork tenderloin. Um, you, you see them all over the place in the grocery store, but it's the it's the center cut. They're small. They tend to be six, eight ounces each. Really a great size if you're going to cook for one or two. In those packages, there's usually two of them. So you can cook one and freeze one. Unfortunately, <laughs> I couldn't find any. So I found the turkey cutlets and I love turkey cutlets. It's a nice change from chicken. Um, so what they are, they're boneless and it's basically the breast and they've sliced it, okay? So voila, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to season, we're gonna, I'm just gonna make one. So if you're just cooking for one, you can make one. If you want two, two whatever, you know, um, if you cook them, they'll last for like a couple of days in the refrigerator. The beauty of this is if you buy a package of them, there's probably going to be five or six in them in, in the package. So you can take one or two out and then freeze the rest and use it another time. Right. So that's that's the nice thing about this. So you don't have to cook it all at once and then get stuck with all this turkey leftovers where we get a little bored of having leftover turkey. But um, so anyway, what I'm going to do is we're going to season this with a little bit of salt and pepper. If you don't want to use salt, don't use salt. But you know, turkey's kind of bland. We do want to put. Where did the pepper go? Oh, there it is. We want to put some seasoning on it, and then Italian seasoning. And what is what's an Italian seasoning? So it's a combination of rosemary, oregano, and thyme. Right, usually. So if you don't have Italian seasoning, you and you have those others, just put in whatever, you know, put in a nice combination of that, right? Um, I happen to have some, so I'm just gonna pour a little bit on, on top on both sides. Now, since this is so thin, it's going to cook very quickly. So I'm going to cook this in my pan. Which one do you want on this one? And I'm just going to heat up my stove. And we're going to uh, just, it's going to cook pretty quickly, just a couple of minutes on each side. We're going to cook it in butter. Yes, butter. I don't buy salted butter. It tells you to use salted butter. So I don't buy salted butter because <laughs> I use butter a lot for, for baking and I don't want, God forbid, I pulled out the salt, salted butter when I'm making cookies. Ugh. I had a friend of mine who did that. It was not yet, not good. Let's put it that way. So I'm gonna put the butter in my pan. And as I said, I'm gonna saute, when it melts, I'm going to saute the turkey in the pan. I'm just gonna do one, yeah. 
because we're not gonna eat till later. I wanna eat this hot. So if I make one, <laughs> we, can, we can snack on it <laughs> until, until dinner later on. Um, so this is still melting. Um, and then we're gonna make a gravy, homemade gravy. It's better than the stuff that you buy in the store. Uh, it's a lot cheaper too, to make. Um, and it's really, so I'm waiting for this butter to melt a little bit. My oven's taking a little while to heat up. I meant my oven, my soap. Um, and, um, but when you make gravy, it's just um, garlic, onions. I love the smell of garlic and onions. Uh, and some butter. So we're gonna um, cook that a little bit, then add some flour, then add some chicken stock. While I'm waiting for this, I just wanna double check on my, oh, my potatoes, look at that. Oh, they look so good. Oh my gosh. I wish you were here. Oh my, looking good. Oh my, those are looking good too. Oh boy, everybody's, everything's just coming along. All right, all right, so now my butter is melted. I'm gonna take my turkey, stick it in there. And we're just gonna let that saute for a minute or for a couple of minutes. As I said, I'm gonna talk about my, uh, my gravy. So in my gravy, this is gravy for two, really simple. It's a quarter cup of chopped onions. You know, if you wanted to use leeks, if you have leeks, you can use leeks. We said, I just have a regular Vidalia onion, doesn't matter. Just a, just a piece, it's probably about a quarter of an onion. Um, and then a clove of garlic that's crushed. So that's it. And then I have, you're only gonna need a little bit of flour. Um, regular all purpose flour is fine. I just, I have Wonder in the cabinet. Um, you don't have to use Wonder, I just, it's open. <laughs> I guess I use it. But could you only need, what do you mean? I think it's like a, God, is it a tablespoon? I do a lot of this by eye. So uh, when I when I make gravy, so um, yeah, it's only going to be oh a half a tablespoon of flour. Oops, this is cooking. I'm going to flip this over. See, this cooks very very quickly. And. So as I said, we're gonna saute the onions and garlic, and then we're gonna add the flour, and then we're gonna add some chicken stock. I love, I don't know if you've seen these in the grocery store, instead of getting those big boxes, if you only need a little bit of chicken stock, you go open up the big box, you only need one cup and there's four cups. They sell these, they're packs of four. Which I think are great. So this way, you know, once you open one of these things up, you're supposed to use it in a few days. And so to be able to have these little ones, I think are great. My mom turned me on to this. We have a great idea. Getting a little smoky in here. So we're just gonna stick that, because that is done. You see how fast it is? But now we wanna make the gravy. So I'm going to add, right now, some more butter, another tablespoon of butter to this. Lower my temperature. You know how much I, I love my, uh, my electric stove. I'm so, still not used to it. I need to get over it. <laughs> and we're gonna add the onions and garlic. And we're going to saute that. Just for a couple of minutes until it gets soft. And you want to watch this because you don't want to, you don't want to burn your butter, right? So uh, we're just letting that saute. I'm going to take that off a little bit. <coughs> Oh, take a peek at mine. I'm going to turn those off. The flour oven turn off because those are almost done. Amazing, right? How quickly that those cook. 
Oh, I love the smell of garlic and onions and butter. You're going to say, well, can you make this with oil? You probably could, but with gravy, you really want to use some butter. I use the same recipe when I make turkey for my, my family. I'll make it ahead of time and I can stick it in the freezer. Okay, so the next thing we're going to add uh, is I add a little bit of salt and pepper to that. We're going to add some of the flour because we want to cook the flour a little bit, right? The, the flour is going to be the thickener. Keep an eye on this because we don't want to burn anything. A little bit more because I didn't use my measuring spoon. If you don't cook the flour, it's just going to, your gravy is going to just taste like flour. And no one just like floury gravy. And then I'm going to use, um, this is a half a cup of chicken stock, they're telling us, because we're only doing one. So this is eight ounces. So I'm just going to use half my box. So then we're just going to cook this until it gets a little thick, right? If you put too much in and it doesn't get thick, that's okay. Because what do we do? We can add a little bit of flour to some chicken stock, right? And that's gonna, and then we can add it to this to your gravy if you want to. And that's just a little trick uh, to, to make something a little bit thicker. I do that with stews and with chili a lot, but I gotta tell you, this is looking pretty good. I don't even need to. So, can you see that? It's gotten very thick, very quickly. So then the last part of this, is we take our turkey, we stick it back in the pan. I'm gonna lower this and put the grate and just let it cook for another minute or two. And you can't see with all the smoke, unfortunately. And it's not smoke because it's burning, it's smoke because um, we just let that cook together for a little bit. I'm gonna put my leftovers back in the fridge, right? Because I can use this for, for anything. I use chicken stock for everything. You know, when I make tomato sauce, I'll use it. Um, believe it or not, I'll put a little bit of chicken stock in it. Um, if I want to, gosh, I got to just um, deglaze a pan, I'll throw chicken stock in there, maybe a little bit of wine, right? So I can use chicken stock for anything. So then I'm just going to. Oops. Put this on my little plate. See, it's a perfect amount of gravy. A little bit left over for later. I'm going to grab my, my Brussels sprouts out of the oven. Look at those. So simple. Oh. But we forgot the most important part. We're not done with the Brussels sprouts yet because we're going to put a little bit of Parmesan on top, right? Sprinkle it on top. I'm going to stick it back in the oven. I almost forgot about this part. I can't believe it. And you can be liberal with this. And then a little bit of balsamic. A little bit on it. If you could buy these at, um, if you go to a restaurant and you buy these, they cost a fortune. <laughs> they do. And it's so easy to make. So I'm going to stick this in here and then pull out my veggies so you can see 
what this looks. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. It smells like heaven. With that, the cinnamon and the ginger and the cardamom. Oh my gosh. So as you see, you got the honey on there. Oh my gosh, this is so good. You could cut them up smaller, remember, but here's the pears. Let's see if I can, if you can see this. You get a fork. Oh my gosh. So, so good. But right, see the pear is really, really soft. And then this is, I guess, the carrot. But they they have different textures. Not, it's it's just such a wonderful assortment, I gotta tell you. And see, and it's got a little bit of, um, you know, it's brown because it's cooked, but you've got the, the flavor of all the, um, of the cinnamon and the cardamom and stuff. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. I'm so excited about this. <laughs> I'm so funny, I know. Um, so that, and that, you know, there's a lot here, but that's okay. What you could also do if you decided, if you have all this leftovers, oh, I'm bored. You could mash it up and have this beautiful, like sweet potato, carrot mash with the fruit. Oh, that's like spectacular. And then we're gonna take these out again. I don't want to keep this in the oven too long because you've got that balsamic and it's just until oh what until the cheese melts a little bit gets a little crispy oh man this is so yummy yeah good dinner <laughs> And once again, really good leftovers, really easy. And then with this salad, Thanksgiving for two. There you go. And I did that, how long? 35 minutes. <laughs> and I was not rushed at all. <laughs> Paul said, don't talk too fast this time. So. <laughs> and no cutting your finger again. So <laughs> anyway. Any questions? Do you want to share any of your Thanksgiving stories? Oh, you can unmute. Please unmute. Please, please share. <laughs> All my kids are coming up. Can't wait. Um, Wednesday night of Thanksgiving, um, the Doyles, uh, Paul has four siblings. So, you know, five of them and all the kids, kids, everybody's getting much older. Uh, we gather on Wednesday night and then Thursday, we're going to have a nice little family dinner with uh, Thanksgiving, and then we'll go see my parents after that. So anybody have any stories or favorite things that they like to make? Any questions? This was not hard. What's for dessert? So, what's for <laughs> <laughs> so my daughter's gonna come home. <laughs> and I'm, I'm sure she makes, a, we, we have a family recipe for um, regatta cheesecake. It's a, mm. Yeah, a homemade regretta cheesecake. Uh, I'm sure she's gonna be making that. I, there's an abundance of pies that, that arrive. Um, so pumpkin, apple. My, I gotta tell you, my kids are not big pie people. I love pie. They're more of um, the cheesecake and chocolate fans. <laughs> so I'm sure we'll, we're gonna get that. Um, yeah, so anybody else? Thank you. This was really great. Oh, I love all you. the vegetables. Thanks for joining. Thanks yeah. for joining. Don't forget, please put your um, your email address in the chat so I can send this to you next Thank time. Thank you. Sure. Um, we're doing uh, December, the second week of December, whatever that is. Um, the, On a Monday? It's yeah, it's a 12th, Monday. I Monday believe. The 12th. Um, 12th. Not sure what I'm doing yet. <laughs> you might have a cookie or two in there. So <laughs> um, I also just bought an Instapot. Does anybody have an Instapot? Um, so it's a pressure cooker. What, so it's pressure cookers. My grandmother had a pressure cooker, um, you know, back in the day. And now they've become the newest thing, the newest fad. So um, I got myself a pressure cooker and uh, they make risotto perfectly, like perfect. So we might do something like that. I don't know. I'll, I'll figure something out. Sure, sure it'll be good. So okay. uh, 
<laughs> All right. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Have a great Thank day. you very much. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. See Thank you. you. December. All right. Happy and healthy. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Mm. Oh, my God. Better than last time. Thank you.